Uh, bring that other mini over here. We'll let you play with that a little bit. You see, that's how it opens the door, just like that. Uh, we're still on the... I think it's level one. The thing about being here is you've always been available and expected to go to everything that ever could happen in the city, so... I mean, I think our eyes are a little more open now. I have to be a lot of but you still, you plan for it. You never know what's going to come next. When I go up to the cars, rather than use the halogen, I'm going to get right in. Like that. Yep. A couple of pops. The deeper you get it in, the better you're going to be. I wouldn't trade this for anything in the world. My wife's very supportive, but she knows the dangers. Sometimes I think it's a lot tougher on her than it is on me. She doesn't get to come to rescue one. You know, she's got to hear the news or whatever it is. And she knows, she knows by now, you know, after 14 years or 12 years or 15 or 100 years, whatever it's been. Um, you now she knows if it's a fire emergency in Manhattan or in uh, this part of New York City, there's a one in five chance we're there. Yeah, it's always a lot of risk involved. If you accept that you may have to take risks and you do it, and sometimes you do it without hesitation, uh, I think that's expected of you. That's 75 has been transmitted for box 418. The address to the INDF line, Second Avenue to Houston Street. That's 1075 being transmitted for box 418. 10 4, just let the visual one know that uh, the location of the fire is still unknown at this time. It's somewhere in that construction tunnel. They just haven't found it yet. Hey, Chief, what do we do for you? Uh, they run a mess of Okay. Uh, you can just, go down uh, there, see what's going on. Yeah. I got a dose similar. It'll pick up anything that okay. might be radioactive. It'll go off. They apparently, they still haven't found the uh, fire, right? Yeah, it's just shit burning, but it's just, we can't get at it. You know, it's behind these metal bars. So they just need fire saws or what? Well, the saw and the torch, we'll go down, we'll team up. And they're going to be running out of air now, so we'll switch out with them. What do they need to take four cents through? Where is it that they need? Saws off, I mean, uh, a rebar cutter. There's a square bars, you know, those thin iron right. bars. Right. Rebar cutter would be better than that. Faster. That's good too. That would go. Should have bring that. Hey, bring a bottle if you can carry it. Soda? What? The captain. Let me tell you what. The command post is command post. Put your one down on the platform. Captain in the can there got hurt pretty bad. It was a good 500 foot crawl down the hallway to where the fire was. So zero visibility, so it took a long time to get to him. A lot of guys uh, ended up running out of air. I think it was five maydays at that job. Uh, most were just missing guys who actually just got separated from their boss. Um, and then the last two were for our guys that were unconscious. It was high levels of CO. Yeah, it was well over uh, 2,000 parts per million that we knew of. <clears throat> And about 400 is uh, critical to a person. 1,200 is usually death. You know, he's going to the hyperbaric chamber now, so you figure maybe 8 or 9 o'clock tonight he'll be out of that. And then they'll hold him overnight to watch him. Just a tough situation to be in. Take care. Hey, Jimmy, how are you? I guess you're feeling right, huh? Eh? Ah, you know, keep me down. down. Yeah, little CO, that's all. Little CO? Got my a lot ass. Of CO. Yeah, a lot of CO. Uh, that time we got to the fire, we got to it, put it out, a couple missing members. Actually, you know, I'm out of here and I'm way in there. So, it ain't like knocking out a window and hanging out of a window down here, you know? I'll see you later. Good to see you. All right, take care. You know, firemen take smoke and they, they take a beating and usually they're able to stumble out of there or crawl out of there and, you know, that's what happens. Uh, several people were knocked out, including myself, 
uh, because of the dense uh, smoke down there, without it even being any kind of terrorist uh, threat or operation. Every time you go out the door, you just don't know. You just don't know. Simple, nice, calm morning, right? Planning lunch, and next thing you know, going crazy. We'll always operate in the most aggressive mode consistent with safety. But with that said, we have to always consider there might be something else in there. PD, you know, is really not a responder agency. They're a patrol agency. They're, they're on the street, they're walking around, they're trying to prevent terrorism. That's really what their job is. If for some reason they can't prevent it and there's an incident, then it's ours. I mean, in other words, if there's a, a, a fire or an explosion or a building collapse, it's the fire department's jurisdiction at that point. Bigger. Bigger. Make them bigger. Twice. We're fighting our own war around here, so pretty good chance that we'll be heavily involved in whatever goes on.